so Willa Cather is not just an important Nebraska writer, but really an important world writer, an internationally recognized and read writer who's been translated into dozens of languages. And we're just lucky enough that she has her roots here in Nebraska. This collection shines new light on her and her creative process in a way we couldn't even have anticipated because things are in this collection that we did not know existed. So for example, um, in her last year she was working on a novel that was set in 14th century France. And it was said by those who survived her that all that she wrote, maybe with an exception here or there, was destroyed. And so no one ever thought we'd know anything about that novel. But here in this collection are scenes, pages from this last unfinished novel that are very exciting to read. In addition, there are all sorts of manuscript materials for her other books. Um, Death Comes for the Archbishop, her book from 1927, which many call her greatest book, was there had been no manuscript materials for this at all to let us know how it was created. And here we have these wonderful things like a notebook that has in the front um, an itinerary of her trip in 1925 with Edith Lewis. And it's, Edith Lewis was her partner, domestic partner she lived with for 38 years. And um, Edith Lewis says what they did every day. On Monday we did this, on Tuesday we did this. And you turn a few pages and there's Edith Lewis working out some Spanish phrases in New Mexico. A couple more pages, Death Comes to the Archbishop Manuscript. Almost as if Cather was on this trip and grabbed whatever paper she could find, in this case a cheap bluebird notebook, and started writing a novel that would become a real classic in world literature. So this was very odd when we got it. We thought, what is this? We opened it up carefully. It, was, it wasn't taped, but what this, this is, looks like a wrapping paper. And inside we have uh, one of the deluxe first editions of Cather's book, One of Ours. And inside of it, it ha has been um, inscribed, To my darling mother, I send the book of my heart, Willa Cather, New York, September 20th, 1922. So Charles was her nephew, the, the son of her brother Jim. And she, uh, by the surviving correspondence and by the choices she made in her will, she had a great deal of respect for Charles, thought a lot of him. And in this collection, there are some letters that survive that show that when she lived in New York in the 40s and he was in school um, on the East Coast, he would often come and visit her. Um, she talked about how uh, handsome he was in his army uniform. He went to West Point and uh, she, he would take them out for dinner. Um, they would talk about football, uh, <laughs> which you wouldn't expect, but uh, he apparently roomed with a man who was the Heisman Trophy winner that year. Um, and. Uh, and she really had a lot of respect for him. And some of the letters, she gives him lots of advice. November 21st, 1945. My dear Charles, I was so glad to hear from you and to know that you are comfortably situated and think well of the climate. Remember that you cannot trifle with mathematics. The old proverb was, in mathematics as in war, leave nothing unconquered behind. If you do not understand a point, hire a coach and peg away with him until you get it. Even I, who was so dumb in mathematics, was passed, and I shall always remember when that fat and very jolly, rather young professor wrote on my final examination paper, you are faithful and persevering even in those studies which are difficult for you. Success to you. With much love to you and every confidence in you, your Aunt Willie.